as I was thinking about what type of presentation to do for you guys today, what I suppose what I wanted to achieve is to give you a sense of what the AIM group is. So I, I, I decided to focus on two areas. What, what's trending in terms of online marketing? So where is it going? And I suppose, particularly around the digital media space, how do you strategize? And I think there's a lot of people that are, are still trying to, to figure out. I got, my, I got married during the summer and I got my wife to have a look at the the presentation for her feedback and the, f the one piece of feedback she gave to me she said when was that picture taken and I said I think around January of last year she said I would have said about a stone and a half ago so there you go a uh, uh, happy marriage okay so who are we we're an independent ideas led uh, social business consultancy and as John has said basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to put business meaning or business value around the digital model okay so, as I say, what I wanted to look at today was online marketing trends for 2013, stuff that you need to be aware of that's coming down the track and in very many cases is here now. And indeed, strategic social media planning. Okay. So, I'm sure people recognize these here. So, again, I think the number one trend in, in online marketing at the moment is, you know, we no longer know how our customers are you know, what device they're going to be using when they find us online. Um, they're saying that global sales of tablets are expected to exceed 100 million by the end of the year. And smartphone owners will be in the majority in many countries, including Ireland, where they, they pretty much almost are by the end of the year. So that means that we no longer know what device our customers are going to be using when they come onto our website. What is responsive design? In very simple terms, responsive design is will predict the device that the customer is using and it will, I suppose, change the information to suit that particular device for the best possible uh, user experience. <coughs> this is part of the AHAIN Group um, site here. Again, all of us are concerned with rankings, SEO, but a couple of updates from Google in the last number of years ha have meant that they have had to work quite hard to keep the quality of those rankings up. And uh, content marketing is, is happening at a huge scale now. There is there's millions and millions and millions of pieces of content being pumped out onto the internet every day weekly. So what Google has started to do is focus, how do we identify quality? So quality is always uh, trumped quality when it comes to content, but as I say, recent Google updates that reward very high quality content and penalize low quality content uh, now mean that content marketers really need to focus their efforts on, on what, what they've termed tick content. And what is tick content? Tick content is content that offers a lot of value to people. Right. So you can see some of the reports that we're doing there to try and, I suppose, take advantage of, of the thick content wave that's happening. Another recent um, introduction from Google has been the introduction of auto, write, uh, auto rank. So what is auto rank? Auto rank is the idea that your reputation online as a content creator right, can impact or influence on the search results. Right? So it allows content creators to claim ownership of their content wherever they publish that online and the tool that Google is using to do that is its social media which is Google Plus. So you can go on to Google Plus, you can tell them where you uh, create articles, where you publish online and it will identify those articles with you as an individual. The net result of this is that your name, your picture, your avatar will appear in the search. Right? And I would suggest strongly that one of the, the, the net effects sooner or later is, is, is online publishers or authority sites online will become quite aware of the auto rank of the individuals that they invite to, to, to publish articles or create articles for them. Right, so it's something that I, I would say is coming down the track. Okay, so guest posting, as in publishing outside of your website, has always been a sensible online marketing strategy because it allows you to top, tap into an existing or in many cases a big audience elsewhere on the internet. Now with the advent of auto rank which is going to inform page rank and probably vice versa, if you write for an authority site, right, this is going to build your auto rank. So it's sensible to assume that this is going to start to become a double-edged sword. So in other words, that both your auto rank and the quality of the content that you create will impact upon the SEO. Right. It's also a move by Google to stop people, I suppose, utilizing tactics online that you know, were somewhat unfair or trying to game the system. Okay, 
<clears throat> and the last trend, and this is obviously social media is, is, is very topical, it's, it's very fashionable at the moment. I think the argument for being on social media in terms of business nowadays, regardless of whether you're B2C or B2B, has pretty much been won. Right. But many companies still continue to view social media as very much a build it and they will come. Right. And what they're finding from that is they just start broadcasting their message. They expect a mass of new fans and interaction and it doesn't happen. Now these figures relate directly to the US. Right. So in the US only currently only 20% of marketers are actively measuring social media ROI. I presume the stats in Ireland are somewhat si similar. And a large part of the reason for that is that 80% of marketers and in turn 80% of businesses are beginning with tactics instead of goals. Right? So this is a common, uh, I suppose, a mistake that's been made with respect to social media. So what's the net result of doing this? You're going to waste money and time and tactics that are not going to work, generate an ROI for your business. Right? So again, it, it, it really, you really do need to take the time to understand social and develop a social media strategic plan that will be successful in the long term. So, a lot is spoken about social media strategy and, and very often a lot of the people who speak about the importance, they don't give you, I suppose, the skill set or the tools or the process to go about creating a social media strategy that will deliver ROI. So this is a, a 10 stage process that we have come up with at the Ahane Group. It's one that we use with our clients, right? So it goes without saying, before you jump into social media, the first step or the first thing that you need to do, right, is to listen. Right, because you may not be on social media, right, but you can be sure that your customers, your clients, your prospects are already there and they're potentially already talking about you. Right, so the first thing that you need to do is listen to the conversation, see what's being said, good or bad. Right, it makes sense the next step would be to interact with those people and to actually, and again, social media allows you to do this, to actually involve those individuals, those customers, those prospects with your strategy. Allow them to give you some intelligence to what that should look like. What should you do? What should you use these tools to do? Okay, <coughs> the next step in terms of, of a social media strategic plan is to align what you do online or align what you do with social media with the business. Right? So it should be an extension of the business. So in other words, what are the values? What's the mission statement? You know, what is it that you want to communicate? And social media should be an extension of that. It shouldn't be something altogether different. It should remain very true to what the business is. <coughs> okay, we've seen that social media can be used for an absolute range of business activities. These are obviously some of the the more commonplace ones, so marketing, sales, customer service, research, analysis, HR, etc. Right? But within any organization, particularly the bigger ones, different departments right, will have different needs, they'll have different goals, and the associated KPIs with respect to those goals will differ. And there's a piece of finding out, there's a piece of analysis there in identifying what are the correct opportunities for the particular business. Okay, this is a key point. <coughs> A business shouldn't take on social media for all functions or departments of the business, at least initially. So it's got to be strategic. Where is the most value, right? Where is it easiest to get the most value? And that should inform the decision as to how you use social media initially. So most businesses start with sales and marketing. That isn't necessarily the right answer for each and every business. That's a trend that exists, but it's not always the right answer for each and every business. Very often, you know, customer service, uh, research stuff can be a much more sensible place to start in terms of your, of your goals. Okay, and again, goes without saying, and this, this doesn't just relate to social media, this relates to any other aspect of business again. It's common sense business logic, right? With any, with any goal, you need to have an associated KPI. Because if you don't have a KPI, you can't measure the effectiveness or not of that particular metric. So again, it's sensible to choose a metric that's indicative of that goal's progress and easy to measure. So traditional business metrics, rather than social analytics, are much, much more effective in doing that. Right? So we're talking about conversions, customers, cost, timings, satisfaction levels. Right? The second reason why they're much more effective. Is social media or the online space changes on a continual or a constant basis and very, very fast. Right? So your tactics may have to change to reflect that. In other words, tactics that might work <coughs> last year don't necessarily always work 
this year. So if you're measuring social stuff, right, that's not going to be effective. Whereas if you're measuring traditional business ROIs, even if your tactics have to change, right, the goals, the KPIs, and the measurement of those remain the same. Right? So it's a much, much more effective way to do that. Okay, and again, <coughs> you know, ultimately what is business, and John mentioned in terms of customers, but ultimately business is about driving profitability. Right? So with every department you've got to analyze and assign best you can a monetary value right, to improvements across those areas, those selected metrics. So some metrics within business are, are easily available, for instance sales. Right? Others, for specific, you may have to do some work. So for instance, say that you are going to utilize social media to drive improvement in terms of customer satisfaction levels. Right? It's not sensible to just jump right in there. So what you might need to do in the first instance is survey a particular band of customers in terms of their level of satisfaction, right? and then do whatever campaign or tactics, it, and then measure the improvement. Right? That's the only way you're going to know if that was effective or not. Right? So, so you, you, you sometimes need to do some work up front to be able to, to analyze that information. <coughs> okay. Next step in this process is to investigate the su suitability of each channel, each social media channel to serve that specific goal. And not all channels are, are created equal. So for instance, Twitter is typically a much, much more effective customer service tool than Facebook is. Right? That's not to say Facebook has its own strengths as does, does LinkedIn. But uh, the point is you don't necessarily need to jump into all the channels all at once. You need to identify the ones that make the most sense in terms of the business and the goals and pick those first. <coughs> okay, and this is where, so tactics come in now when all that work is done. But unfortunately for the vast majority of businesses that I see in Ireland, big or small, this is where they're starting at the moment. They're starting with the tactics, right? You know, but you have to determine the tactics that will best serve the goals that you're, you're seeking to achieve. And you're looking at, for examples of tactics that are proven to work. So for instance, right, when we, when we go and put together a strategy for a particular business, right, we don't necessarily just concentrate within Ireland here, or even sometimes within the particular industry. We're looking for the best case examples of internationally of business in that space that have achieved those goal set. And we're looking to simply rob those tactics. Yes, we'll refine them for the particular business, but we're looking for tactics that are provable and have already worked. Right? It's not sensible as a first stage to go in there and experiment too much. It's sensible to do stuff that's proven to work and to then build on top of that. Yes, ex experimentation in terms of social is important, but I would suggest it needs to be grounded in knowledge or in tactics that are already proven to work. <coughs> okay. And this is where the social analytics come in. So a lot of, and this is probably a key differentiator between, I don't know, the AHEN group and, and, and some of the more traditional digital agencies out there. So for instance, if you're someone that wants to grow your Facebook fan base to 20,000 fans, they're probably better people to, do, to deal with. If on the other hand, you want to find out how to turn those fans into customers, that's where we work, right? So this is at the stage where social analytics come in. Right. And you want to prioritize the ones that are most important right, with respect to the KPI that you're trying to achieve, followed by the ones that are easiest to track. So in other words, you're typically trying to measure maybe six or seven social analytics right, with respect to one KPI. And there's a, there's a significant reason for doing that. Because what you will find in some cases is after you analyze the data, your suspected social analytic will not be the one in terms of the most effectiveness of measuring that KPI. Correlations will appear right, in other places, but if you're not measuring for that, you won't see those correlations. <coughs> Once you've finalized your strategic plan, you need to document it, you need to put it down on paper, and you need to present it to whoever the st stakeholders are, right, to get buy-in from individual departments and, and, and management. <coughs> right. You have to assign timelines and tasks. So in other words, there's no quick wins with social media. It's something that you need to do consistently over a long period of time. I typically would say don't expect to start seeing ROI for about six months and have a very accurate picture of ROI for about after 12 months. Right. 
Training supports and tools are something that you need to provide whoever your staff are that are going to uh, implement that strategy. Obviously, if they don't know how to put that out there, they're not going to be able to do it. So you need to identify if they need any supports in that. As well. And again, you agree uh, and manage the rollout. Okay, so as I was saying, with respect to, to ROI. If you do it in this fashion, <coughs> right, you're going to see ROI come from two places, and I've given you an example of, of both here. Direct results, right, so impacts of your social media tactics directly on your KPI, and here's an example. Your, your website has a conversion rate of $50, right, and you convert 2% of traffic. Every 100 visits equates to $100 uh, in sales. So if you double your content output on Twitter, and you increase your traffic from Twitter to from 500 to 1,000 visits, the ROI in this case is $500 less the cost of that tactic. Now, again, to calculate the accurate cost, you need to know whatever the cost of that tactic is. Invariably, it's going to be a time cost here, but that time cost needs to have a valuation beside it. Right. And this is the second one and probably the more interesting one, but it takes some time. So the impact of social analytics on those KPIs, and this is a reason why we, we measure more rather than less, right? These are fluid and more difficult to measure. So if we take the above example, right? But this time we also implement a tactic of, of increasing our engagement levels on Twitter as well, right? So by 200% in this case. This results in 1,500 visits Right. But also if we measure, there's an increase in terms of that traffic because engagement is a relationship building exercise of 1% in the conversion of this traffic. So now every 100 visits from Twitter equates to $150 in sales. So the overall ROI in this case is $1,750, less the cost of the tactics. But importantly, the ROI for the engagement metric is $1,250, less the cost of that tactic. Right. Now that is not something you could start off with, obviously you would need to do something like this first to, to, to get to here. Okay, so our 10 steps again for developing a, a strategic social media plan for your business are align with your business, discover whatever opportunities exist for you, define your goals, identify KPIs, assign values to those KPIs, Decide on whichever channels you're going to use. Determine the tactics. Select your analytics, your social analytics. Roll out the strategy and measure and refine. And that's a key point. I mean, any social media strategy will be a fluid process. So don't expect that you're going to get it 100% right in the first go. You're frankly not. You're going to get it 80, 90% right. And you're going to have to refine it as you get back the data and as you go. Okay. So as I say, I'm Niall Devitt, we're the Ahane Group and thanks very much for, for listening to my presentation today.